Yes. Has anybody here ever been? To the Ice Hotel? different every year. <laughs> so you better go. <laughs> yeah, better hurry. <laughs> Not much more time left. <laughs> what did your daughter think of the experience? Yeah. And is she a free spirit or is she, do you know what EQ type she is? Okay. Wonder. I mean, I don't think it only appeal, appeals to free spirits. I think you could actually write something that might appeal to other segments as well, but certainly it screams out free spirit. She really is free spirit when I think about it. Yeah. She loves to do tours. Okay. Yep. Do the in thing and, yep, okay. Well, there you go. Well, and I, as I say, I think it could be written for a cultural explorer as well. We just happened to choose the free spirit one. Um, this is Atlantic Canada discovery, um, starting off from Halifax. So this is something that's been put together in the travel trade. So normally you have day one, you're staying here, you're, you know, and it's just bullet points, right? If you think of most itineraries that you see. Well, listen to this. Day one, Halifax. The day is yours to fill with the educational adventures of your choosing. Have a first-hand look at the immigrant experience with a visit to Pier 21 National Historic Site the first entry point for many new Canadians, or step back and admire the kilt and red coats of soldiers demonstrating the changing of the guard at the Citadel. Day two, Halifax. Today, the highlights of Halifax, the capital of Nova Scotia, are yours to explore at your own pace. Start with a nature and whale watching cruise departing from Halifax Harbour. You may see minke whales, pilot whales, and fin whales, as well as dolphin seas and many marine birds. Later today, you'll learn about making a favorite Canadian beverage on Alexander Keith's Nova Scotia Brewery Tour. Costume interpreters portraying the characters of the late 1800s will guide you through the oldest working brewery in North America. Day 3, Halifax to Baddock. Travel at leisure to Baddock, located in the heart of the hills of Cape Breton on the beautiful Brador Lakes, an inland sea, and a sailor's paradise. And it continues. But you can see there that each day, it's not a listing of activities, it's actually a little bit of a story, scene setting for you. Who do you think that particular tour as it's written up would appeal to? Yep, for sure. Okay, so those are some examples of writing. I can also show you here, this is something that was done, um, the CTC working with uh, one of their UK um, key accounts. Um, and they had that operator actually run through the EQ quiz with their, um, their customers that were on their file and identified what the dominant EQ types were. And then they, set, they noticed that Free Spirits was a key one, so they actually started to change some of their writing and they rewrote. They had written something and then they had the CTC rewrite it for a free spirit. So join, whoops, join an exclusive club, um, discover gourmet um, luxury, incredible food and wine, um, leave totally refreshed. I mean, various things touching on the values of the EQ. And it didn't say dear free spirit. I should point that out. That was just for the purposes of this example. Um, but that, <laughs> that particular um, and, and the test that they have done resulted in these pilot projects, a 10% or more increase in open rates and click through rates. Um, I mean, that it is talking to these people at a much more emotional level. It's drawing them in. Um, we don't have the data on how many more actually booked, but again, you hit the right people and it, it's a numbers game. It starts to follow through. Um, okay, imagery. Essentially, the same principles that are used in writing can be applied to image selection. Um, your visual assets are meant to complement and reinforce what you're saying. 
the picture's worth a thousand words kind of thing. You know, make it all work together and really help to tell that story. Um, when you've done that well, that end product is really going to help people play the movie. If we think of going back to the Ice Hotel, didn't you have a much better sense of the movie at the end of the second description that you had in your head and what you could be doing and, oh, someone said, I want to go, um, than you did after the first description? So that's what you're trying to get at. You're trying to you know, script the movie and, and let people put themselves into it. Um, that's the critical piece. That's where we move people from just thinking into actually planning and, and booking their trip. Um, the CTC research has shown that a lot of people are getting stuck there. Um, and if you think back to the past, a lot of the, think about what the imagery of Canada was. Moose, mountain, and mounties, right? I mean, it, it was a lot of landscape imagery. Hardly ever did you see people in it. It makes it pretty difficult for people to put themselves into a picture if they don't see other people there. The exception to that would be authentic experiencers because they tend not to always want to be where people are. But the free spirits and even the cultural explorers, they want to see some people there. Um, the authentic experiencer isn't going to mind if there are people there as long as it's not looking like it's a super touristy Disney kind of attraction because that's not appealing to them. But that, you know, just starting to put people in your pictures is likely going to make a difference in terms of people being able to see themselves too. So show pictures that are showing engaged travelers. It's not just about the lens. A first person perspective, all right? So you can actually feel like you're taking a part, you're in part of this and taking the picture. Unnatural, unposed, authentic people. Again, it's about, you know, nature, especially thinking about these three segments. It's about, these are natural people. They're the young people who are there, you know, they see themselves. It's about seeing yourselves. It's authentic. It's real. Inherent warmth. Um, you know, some pictures are warm, some pictures are cool. That ice hotel picture, I mean, it's a cool place, but it actually, that was a warm feeling picture. The fireplace, the people in it, all those sorts of things. Make sure you have headline space if you need it. And that it references Canada, that it looks like it's here in some way. And that doesn't mean just sticking the maple leaf on it. <laughs> but, you know, think about it. The, the brand experience, we talked about the three pillars of the brand. You've got the geography, the people, and the culture. And as much as possible, you want to ensure you're showing all three of those. And we do have some fabulous landscapes here that are uniquely Canadian. And you have them outside your front door as well. If you can show within that, that's also going to help. Free spirit. What about this picture screams free spirit? People yeah. Festivals, fun, celebration. Yep. Yeah. Urban. Yep. Yeah. Great. So you, you can see there you've got one picture that's tons of people. Another one here that's much more intimate. You know, you can feel yourself being drawn in there. Cultural Explorer. So, can't see this very well probably, but there are some people down here. <laughs> All right, this one doesn't have, this has a couple of people over here. But again, what's showing, what's being highlighted there? Unique, the culture, all right? You've got the Aboriginal culture. You've got, you know, obviously this is a walk, you know, through uh, you know, the, the landscape itself. It might be a guided walk. Oops. Uh, I'm really heavy on this. Authentic experiencer. Okay. Authentic experiencers, they do like to be active. It's not about being extremely active necessarily, but they want to be a part of nature and the land and what's going on. So, you know, here, a very local thing to do, skating on the rink. That's an authentic Canadian experience. Um, over here, you know, you've got dog sledding. 
certainly not something everybody does, but again, it's that outdoor adventure. In this case,